Hello everyone and welcome to 12.2 which is all going to be all about angles and angle measures and we're finally going to learn what that radian thing is on our calculator. So angles and standard position have two pieces. There's an initial side and then a terminal side. The initial side stays in place, it's just in line with the x-axis and actually also with our unit circle which we'll look at later with the 0 and the 360. So it's like with the positive x side. And then the terminal side is the thing that moves. So think of it as, you know, if our clock went the wrong direction and the minute hand, if the hour hand totally stayed in place. So we can draw angles in standard position. Sometimes angles will be positive, which we are used to. Angles can also be negative though. That just means that our hand is going to go in the opposite direction. It's going to go clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise. Yes, it's going to be the opposite of what you would think. Just like our quadrants were numbered in counterclockwise order, that's the way that our terminal hand travels. So, if I was going to draw an angle with a measure of 225, I see that that is positive. So you can draw your initial side, but it's really not necessary as long as you start in the positive x. So we're going to go, all right, it hits 90. That's 180. 270 is right here, so I know we're somewhere in between. And that's 225 degrees. Right here is well, we went 45 past 225, so if we want that as a reference, we can have that there. This will actually come in handy when we're talking about these angle measures in the next section. If I wanted to draw a negative 60 degree angle and say I had multiple choice, well, negative 60, I know that I need to travel the opposite direction, so this one's out. And this one's out. This one is going in the opposite direction, however, it's not started with this positive x side, for my initial side, therefore C must be my correct answer. Because I started at my x-axis, I traveled clockwise 60 degrees from the positive x line, and I got my answer. Now I can get angles that are bigger than 360. So if I was going to draw 400, well I know 360 is one way around. It's not quite 90 more than 360, but it is a little bit more than. In fact, it's 40 degrees more than. And this whole angle is 400. So this is 360 because that completes one complete cycle and then 40 more gets us to 400. So if we notice, 400 could looks kind of like a 40 degree angle, and negative 60, if we were going to compare that to a positive angle, looks like 300. If we're just looking at the initial side and the terminal side, nothing else, none of this revolution stuff, we're kind of ignoring that when we're looking at our co-terminal angles. Co meaning with, terminal meaning referring to the terminal side. So the way that we get coterminal angles, if we are asked to find a positive or negative coterminal angle for a particular angle, we add and subtract 360 because that gives us the full revolution. So if I had 210, I could subtract 360 and add 360. So you went positive. I would add 360 and I'd get 570 degrees. That would look just like 210, it would just be one revolution more. If I subtracted 360, I'd get negative 150 degrees. Those two would be my answers. If I'm looking at 395, I see that that's already bigger than 360, so I could go ahead and subtract 360 twice or I could also add 360, so I'll list three possibilities. You would only need to have 
one of the positive and one of the negative. So if I was going to add 360, I'd have 755. If I was going to subtract 360 from that 395, I'd get 35 degrees. That is positive, so either one of these. And then if I was going to subtract 360 from that 35 again, I'd get negative 325. So my answers would be either 755 and negative 325, or I could say 35 and ne that negative 325. I wouldn't recommend going more than once into the negatives or once into the positives if you can avoid it just because that way your numbers are a little bit smaller and you have less room for mathematical error. We saw in our calculator when we were playing around with things from the last section, there was two options. There was radians and degrees. These are both different ways of measuring angles. Radians refers to the angle measure in terms of the portion of the circle. So a circle I can measure as 360 degrees if I'm just talking about, all right, how far did I go around? Or another way to reference going around a circle is the circumference, which is 2 pi r. So, 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians. If I'm converting my angles, because I can divide both of these by 2, pi is equal to 180 degrees. So to convert angles, you can use that 360 equals 2 pi or the simplified version pi over 180 and the 180 over pi. This is a form of 1, so if I have degrees, I'm going to want to get the pi in my answer, so I'm going to have pi in my numerator, so pi over 180. If I have radians already, so I have a pi in my initial problem, I'm going to put the pi in the denominator to cancel out my units, so I'm going to use the 180 over pi. So if I have 315, and I want to convert that to radians. Currently I have degrees, so I want to make sure I have degrees in the bottom so that my units cancel out. Cancel out. So I've got 315 over 180. You want to simplify this as a fraction, as a improper fraction. And I get 7 pi over 4. On your calculator, remember to get the fraction version of a number. If I take 315 divided by 180, you can hit math fraction right away because it doesn't really matter what the decimal is, and I get 7 over 4, or 7 the division bar 4, depending on which OS you have. So, now if I have my radians, and you can kind of leave out the word radians if you don't want to write radians every time. I'll understand what you mean. So if I have pi over 6, I want to have pi in my denominator so that my units cancel out. And then 180. 180 divided by 6 is 30 degrees. So you just have to be careful with what you have, what you're going to, and then just make sure your units cancel out. And lastly, we're going to talk about arc length in terms of radians. Now, in geometry, you saw this as you take your degree over 360 times 2 pi r. If you want to do that still, realistically, that's fine because you're going to get the same answer. However, this is sort of a shortcut because there's, well, less things to multiply. So we find our arc length which we represent with the letter S, by taking our theta, or our degree, in radians, that's key, times our radius. So, 
steering wheel on a monster truck has a radius of 11 inches. How far does a point on the steering wheel travel if the wheel makes four-fifths of a rotation? In case you ever were wondering. So, let's see, they, tell, they don't tell us the degrees, but they do tell us that it's four-fifths of a rotation. So I can use that to my advantage because I know I've got four-fifths of my full rotation, which is two pi. I don't have to worry about turning that into degrees and then changing the degrees to the radians. I can just go right there. So I get eight pi over five, because remember that's two over one. I do not multiply to both my numerator and my denominator. That is my theta. Now I need to multiply by my radius, which was 11. So I get 88 pi over 5, which to a reasonable person will look something like... Fifty-five point three inches. So just make sure for these that your theta is in radians, and then you're good to go. We'll look at some more of this in class, and I'll see you then.